We begin tonight with late breaking news out of Bastrop County, where emergency crews have been evacuating residents due to a wildfire which has grown well out of control tonight. This video you're seeing now on your screen was tweeted out earlier today by the Texas A&M Forest Service and credited to Starflight and Bastrop County Emergency Service District number two. It gives you an idea of the sheer size of the situation up there. According to the last update on Twitter from Texas A&M Forest Service, which is assisting Bastrop County firefighters on the ground, the fire located along Castle Way is estimated at about 100 acres and at this time is just 35% contained. That is as of 940 tonight. Bastrop County officials are directing those east of Castle Way and west of Kelly Road to Highway 21 to leave their homes immediately. The county has already designated Timberline Fellowship Church near Bastrop as a shelter. We'll continue to follow the story tonight and bring you the latest updates as we receive them both on KSAT.com and again tomorrow on GMSA. Meanwhile, back here at home tonight, she was pulling into her driveway of her apartment complex when someone shot and killed her. The woman's two daughters forced to witness it all. San Antonio police are looking for leads tonight in a road rage shooting that happened last night along I-35 Frontage Road east of North Walter Street. The night team's Patty Santos tells us the victim's family is pleading for witnesses to now come forward. Oh, she's like, help, help, mommy needs help. It was sister too, they need help. Help, help. Jesus Vega says his distraught seven-year-old niece Alexa was calling him for help as she watched her mother and 14-year-old sister bleed from gunshots. Now she knows she basically saw her mom pass away in front of her. The family says Lucia Mendoza, 37, died on her way to the hospital. The 14-year-old Kimberly was grazed in the neck by a bullet and another bullet went through her shoulder. They were literally turning into their home. The family says Mendoza and her daughters exited I-35 at Walter Street headed home from a day of shopping. Police say they were the victims of a road rage shooting with someone in a brown or tan colored GMC Yukon type suburban. It appears that she attempted to evade the gunfire by basically gassing her vehicle by by accelerating rapidly. She jumped the curb, drove through the field. Police say at least five shots were discovered on Mendoza's vehicle. What my seven-year-old told me was horrendous. I mean, she just said this dark, chubby colored man just started um, shooting at us and he has so much hate in his eyes. Police are trying to find that shooter. The family is pleading for business owners with cameras near the area and witnesses to speak up. We just want a little bit of closure for the family. We don't ask for much. I mean, we are not bad people. Mendoza was a janitor at Trinity University. She leaves behind three siblings and parents. A lot of people I love there. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Hours of firefighting couldn't prevent an Eastside church from being destroyed overnight. Churchgoers at the Huntley Park Baptist Church say that they're in disbelief a place they saw as an Eastside staple is now nothing but ash. They tell me their only option from here is to rebuild. The first thing that went to my mind was, oh my God. I was thinking, now what in the world? Happen. Many churchgoers familiar with the Huntley Park Baptist Church and Pastor Johnny Guyton drove by the now destroyed sanctuary Saturday afternoon. San Antonio fire officials say it was around 11 Friday night when flames were spotted shooting through the roof. It took hours for firefighters to put those flames out before the structure ultimately collapsed into the pile of rubble you see here on East Houston Street. Sweet Home Baptist Church Deacon James Ussery says this church had a major impact on the east side. This is part of the history and part of the uh, community's history, too. Because of the pandemic, the church has been hosting their services through live streams, but the technology Pastor Guyton invested in, gone. He bought all these screens. and I mean, it was beautiful. And all this computerized audio and all that. Carl Thomas is a theology student with the church. He said he was heartbroken by the news that something this tragic happened to the people who have helped him the most with his religious education. The disaster that this happened, I wouldn't have never thought of this in my wildest dream. You know, Pastor Guy, and he's a good man. It's all these members over here, they would help anybody. The community says they are praying for Pastor Guyton as he and his congregation sort through this hard time. Keep going. Don't turn around. Uh, keep your head up. Just stay encouraged. Don't let this be a setback of what God has for you. 
The cause of the fire is still unknown at this time, but despite everything, the church is still planning to have a service tomorrow via Zoom. New on the night beat, flames causing a good chunk of damage to a home over on the northwest side this evening. Firefighters on scene say they got that call around 6.15 tonight. It took about eight fire units to fight the fire located on Cherry Park Drive. We're told it started in the home's garage, but it's unclear how it started. The homeowner was there at the time, but was outside. There was one dog inside the home, but it was rescued by firefighters. Much of the damage dealt to the garage and an upstairs bedroom. Other top stories today, a man has been accused of arson following two fires this morning on the northwest side. The first happening at a vacant home in the 200 block of Angela Drive. A witness told police they saw the suspect set the house on fire. Fire crews arrived on scene shortly after. They say that the wind made it pretty difficult to get the flames under control. There was also a grass fire that started near the home, believed to have been started by the same suspect. No injuries reported in either incident. A man is in critical condition after he was found unresponsive in the middle of the street with multiple gunshot wounds. That man found near FM 78 under the Loop 1604 overpass. Converse police say a witness saw the man passed out by his vehicle with two gunshot wounds to his chest. He was taken to the hospital. No word on his condition tonight. It's also unclear what led up to the shooting. We do know no arrests have been made and there is no suspect description at this time. A man was shot and killed by San Marcos police after allegedly charging at them with the weapon. This happened just after midnight today along I-35. San Marcos police say that the man was walking on the highway and crossed into traffic. As police tried to get him into custody to get him off the road, police say the man moved aggressively toward them, brandishing a knife. After shooting him, officers say that they tried to give him CPR to no success. He was pronounced dead at the scene. At least 90 different addresses. That's how many mailboxes San Antonio police alleged 34 year old Ashley Lujan seen here stole from. Police say a good number of those boxes coming from a single apartment complex called Hampton Cove. Lujan, along with an unidentified male suspect, was caught on security camera there. In that video, police say you can see Lujan use a crowbar to pry open several mailboxes, removing the mail and stuffing it into her purse and a backpack. She was later arrested by DPS. Investigators say they found even more stolen mail on her as well. She's now been charged with mail theft. Happening around Texas, one of the victims who survived Thursday's mass shooting in Bryan is telling family members about his experience. Family members of the 48 year old man say he was shot in the arm and suffered multiple leg injuries in his attempt to escape. The victim's brother in law says that he visited him in the hospital yesterday and got his side of the story. He heard a loud, you know, like bang you know he said you know what I, I just thought it was probably one of the machines that went out or something you know but you know then i happened to look down and i seen someone trying to get off the floor and that's whenever he heard a second bang and that's when he you know he saw that someone got shot as soon as he turned to run he just saw blood come out of his arm as he was getting shot the victim told his family he had to jump off a loading dock with a co-worker to hide, breaking both his legs in the process. Later dragging himself under an 18-wheeler for protection, one person was killed and five injured in the attack, including a DPS trooper. Suspect is being held on a $2.2 million bond. Some good news tonight on the vaccine front here in Texas. Nearly one third of those eligible in the state have been given at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. That's according to the CDC. And for those who still haven't, WellMed is opening more than 3,000 vaccine appointments for a two-day distribution event next week. They'll be giving out the one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The event is set for Monday and Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Doris Griffin Senior One Stop Center located off Loop 410. Anyone 18 and older can sign up. The number to call 833-968-1745. You can also sign up online and we have the link to do that on our website at ksat.com. Outside with live cam, it has been such a comfortable evening. Uh, I sent out a push alert to the case at Weather App and said it was perfect for dinner outdoors or on the patio. Just so comfortable out there. 
after what was a pretty warm afternoon, it wasn't quite as hot today as it was yesterday and earlier in the week, but we did make it into the mid to upper 80s today. 87 at the airport after a morning low of 61. So warm, but again, pretty comfortable with low humidity in place. We've got another day tomorrow with low humidity, dry air hanging around for the end of the weekend. A few high thin clouds will be moving in tomorrow and it'll be another warm day. I expect our high temperatures to jump back into the upper 80s, a few spots in the low 90s as we wrap up the weekend next week. Not as warm, more clouds and also some low chances of rain. We'll talk all about that coming up in just a bit. Still ahead on the night beat, the latest on COVID-19 in the U.S. As states brace for a major drop in supplies of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine next week, we reach the highest single day case count in almost two months. Plus, severe weather turning deadly in Louisiana. How powerful storms ravaged a small community there. And it's a race against time to escape a Caribbean island where a long dormant volcano is erupting, spewing smoke and ash miles into the sky. The latest on the evacuation efforts next. Now to the race to escape an erupting volcano in the Caribbean. New images coming in tonight. Thousands evacuating as ash rains down on the island of St. Vincent. Four cruise ships rushing in to help take people to safety. Here's ABC's Julia McFarlane. Tonight, the idyllic Caribbean island of St. Vincent covered in ash. Eerily empty after thousands of people told to evacuate immediately. Me can't take it no more. I have to run. I have to move now. The long dormant La Soufre volcano erupting Friday, spouting columns of smoke and ash more than six miles skyward. Now fears that rain may cause the superheated ash in the air to harden into rock. The ash ball itself, if it gets wet, it's, it forms like a cement type of texture. Luxury yachts and cruise ships being repurposed to transport evacuees. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent, thankful for help from neighbouring islands, today saying we are one Caribbean family. Experts warned that even bigger eruptions could still be in store and they could continue for days, weeks, even months. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Turn to weather now. Of course, it was a little hot yesterday. Katie had to oh. bust out the doggy pool. It, yeah, <laughs> yes, hot for humans and animals. Yeah, and I used the real pool yesterday, but it took a lot of cleaning to get all that oak out. Oh, oh my gosh. woke up this morning. Yeah, it was all back. It was all back in there. Yeah, <laughs> windy late last night and this morning, thanks to a front that came through early in the day, and that did cool us down a little bit. Uh, today, it was still warm out there, but with that drop in humidity, not too bad. I want to show you wind speeds currently. Obviously, Obviously, it was windy, gusty at times today. Winds are light now. Hopefully, that will help uh, the firefighters there working to fight that fire in Bastrop County. Uh, winds are expected to stay light overnight, around five miles per hour in most spots. So hopefully, these light winds overnight through early tomorrow uh, will help their firefighting efforts there. That will also allow temperatures for a lot of us to drop into the 50s through early tomorrow morning. So light winds overnight through early tomorrow. And we'll get a touch breezy at times late tomorrow afternoon, early Early in the evening winds about 10 15 miles per hour, but not overly gusty. The important thing to note with our winds tomorrow into Monday, a change in wind direction. So today our winds have been northerly by the end of the day tomorrow. Certainly by Monday morning, winds will be back out of the south southeast off the Gulf of Mexico, and that will start to bring the Gulf moisture back in. So tomorrow still We've got the dry air in place. Our dew points are still going to be on the lower end in the 40s, starting to climb into the 40s but that still feels nice and dry. However, as that Gulf moisture starts to move in Monday all the way through next week, our dew points are going to stay fairly elevated. They could dip into the mid to upper 50s, but for the most part, uh, they're going to be a bit more elevated for the duration of next week, and that's going to play into what's looking like a cloudy and somewhat cooler week next week. I keep using the term cooler because compared to the mid to upper 90s where we were the past several days, Upper 70s, low 80s, a little cooler and a lot more seasonable. Uh, so you'll notice next week a lot of cloud cover and also daily chances of isolated showers and even a few rumbles of thunder. We're heading into a weather pattern next week that's going to be slightly unsettled. It's not going to lend itself to a wide coverage of rain each day. 
but some little disturbances as well as a frontal boundary that will be dropping in early on Tuesday will help to produce some isolated showers and storms as we get into next week. So even by Monday with this front just off to our north, I do think we could have some isolated showers and storms Monday um, and then this front will continue to drop in on Tuesday. It's going to move very, very slowly, but that will help to keep some isolated rain around as we get into Tuesday and as this front stalls out and becomes stationary through the middle of the week. That'll also keep a little bit of lift around and some room for some isolated rain, but you'll notice here it's not everywhere across the area, uh, but there will be periods we believe of some showers and storms uh, as we get into next week and that even continues into the end of the week and start of next weekend. So over the next seven days, we could see some spots that maybe start to get close to an inch of rain, that kind of tealish color here uh, near Rock Springs up to Fredericksburg. That's between a half inch to an inch of rain. That blue getting closer to one inch of rain. Best chances for those types of totals again over the next seven days will be north of Highway 90. So certainly not all the rain that we need. Uh, this is a really interesting graphic. This is our precipitation deficit over the past year. So if we wanted to get back to even with rainfall, we would need 20 inches of rain here in San Antonio, 22 inches of rain in Kerrville. Some of those numbers are not quite as dramatic elsewhere. Austin is much closer uh, there. They would just need one inch of rain, but a lot of the KSAT viewing area, including here in San Antonio, really behind on rainfall. Uh, so we need to make up some ground. Don't think we're going to do that all this week, but at least we've got those low end chances to help us out a little bit out there now just shy of 70 degrees. Again, the air is nice and dry. We're going to keep that low humidity around tomorrow, but because of that, will warm up very efficiently 54 in the morning up to the upper 80s tomorrow afternoon. Humidity rolls back in Monday and again that kicks off our daily chance uh, low chances of some showers heading into next week. All right, Katie, bring on the rain. Yes, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you. Saying Katie. there's a chance. <laughs> we'll take it. All right, Larry, the Spurs really need to figure out a way to win. They do. I mean, they have a tough schedule right now. And then, of course, the last two games, they faced a very tough opponent in the Denver Nuggets. Nikola Jokic, they call him the Joker, but he's more like an ace. He's averaging a triple-double against the Spurs this season. I mean, the dude's just awesome. Plus, it was moving day at the Masters, and we have a new leader coming up. Jokic is, you know, maybe the best passer in the league, certainly best big man passer and better than most wings. And so, uh, sure, he sets the table for everybody. He's great. Coach Pop with some serious praise for Nugget Jokic. center Nikola Jokic in big board sports. Shooting guard Lonnie Walker, the fourth, returned for the Spurs last night after missing the nine previous games with a sore right wrist. He played 17 minutes and he scored eight points against the Nuggets. Every Spurs starter scored in double digits with Derek White leading the way with 25 points. Now Denver led from start to finish and by as many as 18 points in the second quarter. The Spurs fought back and had a chance to tie the game in the final seconds, but Keldon Johnson missed a layup, and then DeJounte Murray and DeMar DeRozan both missed put-back attempts. Spurs fall 121 to 119, and Pop was asked what his guys did in the second half to get back into the game. Better physicality, uh, better pace on offense, and we shared the ball great the entire game. But, uh, you know, the three-point deal uh, didn't work for us. We were great in a lot of categories. 33 assists is fantastic. Uh, really proud of them, but their physicality and their pace kept them in the game, even though uh, they knocked down threes and we didn't. Nugget center Nikola Jokic had 26 points, 14 assists, and 13 rebounds. Pop called him the NBA's best big man passer. He helped the Nuggets beat the Spurs for the second time in three days, thanks to his 54th career triple-double. He's incredible, man. You gotta give him his credit, man. He's he's hell of a player, hell of a IQ, hell of a skill set. Um, everything about him is, is, is as a basketball player, gotta be a fan of his game. You know, um, he makes it makes it look easy, and you got a big that's that dynamic. You know, it makes it hard hard to beat. You know, so hats off to him. You gotta give him all the credit in the world. 
Spurs will face the Mavericks tomorrow night at 7 at the American Airlines Center. So Dallas will be a bit more fresh because they last played Thursday night and they beat the Bucks 116-101. They've won six of their last seven games and seven of ten and now have a solid hole on the seventh spot in the Western Conference. The Spurs are two games out of eighth but still in the top ten to qualify for the play-in tournament. The third round of the Masters saw a rain delay of one hour and 15 minutes, and it has a new leader. Shot of the day on moving day, par three, six. Corey Connors' ball is right on line, and it's in for an ace, the sixth ever golfer to ace that hole. He went four under today and sits six under overall, moving up seven spots. Now, Justin Thomas, well, he moved the wrong way today. Par five, 13th, and his approach shot missed the green. It ends up in a stream, and the ball slowly floats away before settling to the bottom of the riverbed. He triple bogey. He dropped seven spots, and he's tied for 13th at one under par after three over 75. Wow. Second round leader. Justin Rose had an up and down day. He sinks this birdie on 12 to take back the lead at eight under par, but he'd shoot even par 72 to remain seven under heading into the final round. This guy made the big move today. Hideki Matsuyama on the par three 12th. He sticks a great tee shot. He made birdie to tie Rose for the lead. He shot a fantastic seven under 65 to take over the clubhouse lead at 11 under par. I have a lot of great memories, um, you know, watching uh, the Masters as a young, young boy. Uh, first time I watched Tiger Woods was the winner. Another great memory is uh, when he chipped in at 16 down the hill, but just going in. Always dreaming someday I could play here. Hideki Matsuyama has a four-shot lead on four guys heading into the final round. Will Zalatoris is shining in his first Masters. Justin Rowe is still in the mix. Corey Connors is sixth. Jordan Spieth seventh at five under. Lefty sits at even par, and Abraham Anser is three over. Kiana Williams, she is ready to go pro. That's coming up later in sports. That shot you showed of the ball rolling down the creek, if you ever wondered what my golf game is like. <laughs> I imagine that was you. <laughs> my golf game would probably be somebody windshield, so <laughs> either way, thanks. Thanks, Larry. Stay you with us. To the coronavirus in this evening, states bracing for a major drop in supplies of the one-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and it couldn't come at a worse time as cases are rising. Yeah, on Friday, the U.S. reported 82,000 COVID-19 cases. That is the highest single-day case count in almost two months. The third straight day, they topped 75,000 nationwide. ABC's Christine Sloan tells us how states are adjusting course. The nation bracing for a significant drop in vaccines as coronavirus cases rise. Johnson & Johnson's supply expected to fall 85 percent this coming week, a number not expected to rise until federal regulators approve manufacturing at a Baltimore plant where millions of doses were contaminated. The last thing we wanted to hear about was we're getting less vaccines. After a small number of people experienced minor adverse reactions, Four states, including Colorado, temporarily halted the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We had concerns that these were not normal reactions when you're sitting in the front seat of your car or worse yet, driving home. We paused the administration of vaccines on Wednesday. The CDC insisting the doses are safe and nearly every site has resumed. I think it's very in individualized. You're going to have people who have different effects from it. In Michigan, which has been inundated by the UK variant, officials partnering with colleges to vaccinate students before they head home. The governor also calling for a two week hiatus on high school and youth sports. While in Europe, regulators are now looking into a possible connection between the Johnson and Johnson vaccine and a small number of blood clots, something some American health experts want examined. We'll see whether or not that's a problem, but the important thing is to look. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Making headlines around America tonight. Two deputies shot in Salt Lake County, Utah this morning. The suspect responsible for that shooting dying at the scene. That shooting took place at the Unified Police Headquarters, which is adjacent to the Salt Lake County Jail. The two deputies were responsible for security in a parking lot area and were on duty when those shots rang out. Because of the close proximity to police headquarters, officer response was almost instant. These type of incidents are really devastating for the department and we hope and we pray that our deputies will be okay. Uh, the environment for law enforcement right now is extremely dangerous and we know that. 
The Salt Lake County Sheriff's Office is making peer support services as well as their chaplain available to the family and co-workers of the wounded deputies. A motive for the crime not yet known. Two people are dead and several have been injured after severe storms swept through parts of Louisiana. These are photos of damage from the St. Laundry Parish area. Officials say a possible tornado hit the area early today, killing one. The National Weather Service plans to assess the damage to determine the size of the possible tornado. Meanwhile, power crews are working to restore the power to the affected areas. Officials believe the other severe weather related death occurred on last night. A 48 year old Shreveport man was killed when a tree fell on the mobile home he, li he was living in. Severe storms also wreaking havoc in Florida. This video was taken in Panama City, a water spout dangerously close to the shoreline there. You can see it moving closer and closer. No one appeared to be on the beach at the time and no word of anyone being injured from that water spout. KSAT Explains has returned for another season. The online streaming show is back, diving into the stories, making headlines in order to give you a deeper explanation of more content. Myra Arthur shares a little insight into how the team chose its first topic for the premiere episode of season four. Mid-February 2021, here's what we know. It was freezing, below freezing, actually. There was snow and then there was ice. And then the power went out and then went the water. Now you know that the power outages were linked to those extreme cold temperatures because of those so-called rolling blackouts and the water problems were related to that too. But what exactly happened? What caused the massive failure of the Texas power grid? Why were we all four minutes and 37 seconds away from a blackout that could have lasted months? That's what we're tackling in this latest episode of KSAT Explains. We're explaining what ERCOT does, how it operates, its relationship with CPS Energy, why Texas is the only state in the country to be on its very own power grid, and why power generators in the state don't have to make sure that their equipment can stand up to extreme winter weather. Because we know the snow and ice that we saw in February will come around again. And it may not be decades before we see that. And when the time comes, we don't know if millions of Texans will be left again without power and water. But you won't be in the dark when it comes to understanding the Texas power system. Check out this latest episode of KSAT Explains on KSAT.com slash explains or the KSAT TV app. Still ahead, are weighted blankets the key to a more restful night of sleep? They just might be, and we've got some tips on how to pick the best one for you next. Well, there's been no shortage of things to worry about during this past year, leading to some restless nights. Well, the latest product that's supposed to help you get some good sleep is the weighted blanket, and a lot of people swear by them. 12 in your size, Marilyn Moore, it's with what to look for if you're wanting to buy. Weighted blankets. The claim is they calm anxiety, help insomnia, or even feel like a hug. So what is a weighted blanket? Basically, a weighted blanket is a quilted blanket that each of these little pockets is filled with glass or plastic beads. And the pocket keeps the weights from shifting around while you're sleeping. Some find the weight comforting. They've even been used for years for kids with autism. Sales have been booming, so do they help? Sleep expert Dr. Faraya Abbasi Feinberg says there isn't a lot of evidence-based research on whether they work, but her patients like them. I do recommend weighted blankets for some of my patients that struggle with sleep, especially if they feel very restless, and the feedback has been positive. Weighted blankets are not all the same. Manufacturers say you should pick one that's around 10% of your body weight. So does all this extra weight add heat? Well, that depends on the individual, but tests show it adds about as much warmth as a down comforter. There are other ways to improve sleep. Sleep experts recommend avoiding caffeine at night and avoid reading or watching anything agitating. And avoid forcing yourself to go to bed when your body's not ready for bed yet. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Now I gotta try a weighted blanket. 
<laughs> Get yourself a big dog. They work well too. <laughs> Steal Same. the blankets, you know. Same effect. I have Same a big effect. cat. Maybe that'll we'll, work. We'll try that. <laughs> Same effect. Outside now, 70 degrees. I believe we're just shy of 70. Uh, it's been a very comfortable evening. Hope you've been able to enjoy. Starting off at 8 a.m. this morning, we had a front come through before dawn, so we've had clear skies essentially all day. And with drier air in place that did warm us up, we got into the mid to upper 80s this afternoon. Similar scenario as we head into the day tomorrow. There we are, just shy of 70 degrees. Winds are light. They will stay that way overnight and through much of the day on Sunday. We'll take another look at your Sunday forecast and talk a little bit more about next week's rain chances coming up. All right, we are used to seeing the pollen, the catkins and all that comes with mm -hmm. the spring stuff here, but these worms this year seem like they are so mm -hmm. out of control. Like I've yeah. never seen them before. Yeah, I don't recall seeing a lot of them either. Maybe um, a few, but not like this year. I mean, it's yeah. like ridiculous. Yeah, my husband said he was playing some golf and like he they were just everywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. I made my wife check me when I came in from mowing the other day. I was like, look for squirmy worms. Before <laughs> and then when they get squished, then there's blood. It's just like it's nasty. not an <laughs> ideal. Like the terrible. oak is bad enough, and now the oak worms. It's yeah. just not <laughs> ideal. Thankfully, we are in the peak of oak season. Maybe another week or two, and then we should start to be on the downhill trend. As we get into May, oak really should not be an issue anymore. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It was a rough night for some of the Gulf Coast states. You saw that uh, imagery earlier in the newscast about the severe weather in parts of Louisiana. It wasn't just Louisiana. It was also Mississippi, uh, Alabama, the Florida Panhandle specifically getting in on some huge hail. There were parts of the Alabama, Florida Gulf Coast that saw hail up to the size of tennis balls. Thankfully, things are quiet there, but the storm system that brought in that severe weather continues to move east. A lot of thunderstorm activity and rain across Florida today that will continue to move east as well. This is a surface low with the front attached to it. Same front that moved through our area very, very early in the day. Now we've got surface high pressure moving in behind it. Spells quiet weather for us as we wrap up the weekend tomorrow. Also pretty quiet elsewhere across the country, especially on the West Coast. Beautiful weather out there. High temperatures today, 66 in LA, 64 in San Francisco, 70 in Salt Lake City. Phoenix was the hot spot today, 94 their high temperature. We made it up to 87 and then some cooler air behind that front from Memphis up to St. Louis and Chicago 55 the high temperature in Chicago today temperatures at this hour just shy of 70 at the airport. We do have some spots already falling into the mid to upper 50s in the hill country, uh, but it is still on the warm side off to the southwest still 76 in Catula 75 in Del Rio overnight with clear skies, lighter winds, dry air in place. Temperatures for a lot of us will fall into the 50s near 60 in Del Rio, some low to mid 60s as you get farther to the south. Overall, though, a pretty cool start to the day on Sunday. But with that dry air hanging around tomorrow, it will be really easy for the air to heat up as we get into tomorrow afternoon. So after starting off in the 50s, it's going to be another fairly warm day for us tomorrow. Upper 80s here in San Antonio. I think we'll see a few more low 90s on the board tomorrow as compared to today. But again, with lower humidity, it won't be oppressively humid. So that's a little bit of good news. You'll also notice some high thin clouds moving in tomorrow, but still a lot of sunshine for your Sunday. Notice that wind direction. We talked about that last half hour. It will be changing around to the south southeast by the end of the day tomorrow. That is going to bring the moisture back in. But for tonight and much of the day tomorrow, dew points are fine right now. For a lot of us, they're in the 30s. That's feeling nice and dry. Uh, and again, this is going to be a slow uptick in these numbers through the day tomorrow. I don't expect that you'll notice the humidity on Sunday. Now, by Monday morning, different story. That's going to come barreling back in tomorrow night. And by Monday morning, it will be muggy out there. We'll have the morning clouds back, maybe even a little bit of patchy fog as well. Monday kicks off. A string of daily low rain chances for us heading into into next week. Uh, we talked last half hour about that front that will be dropping in that could help to trigger some isolated showers and storms, uh, but we've also just got an unsettled weather pattern that will be in place next week. So these little pieces of orange here, that's weak rain making energy, little disturbances, and they're going to be filtering in and out over the course of the week. So that paired with that stalled frontal boundary next week will keep chances of rain in the forecast each day. I certainly can't promise that your yard will see rain each day. In fact, that's unlikely, but there will be some isolated showers and storms around uh, each day as we get into next week. Rainfall totals over the next week, so we're going to spread this out over a while. Could approach an inch, but again, that's going to be over the next seven days, and the best chances of that right now look to be north of Highway 90. With the additional clouds and higher humidity, we'll keep our 
afternoon highs back closer to where they should be this time of year, upper 70s and low 80s. So we're going to kick the springtime sizzle next week. Yes, just praying that, that rain holds through, though. And to wash some of the oak away. Yes, and, and the worms. worms. Yes. <laughs> All right, Keanu Williams had a storybook ending to her college career. Now she's looking to write the next chapter, Larry. Oh, isn't it just so awesome to watch Wagner High School graduate and she won this championship right here in town with Stanford. And yes, now she is getting ready for the WNBA draft and she's expected to go pretty darn high and the Spurs well, all they can do is just keep fighting. Coming up. Close, but no cigar for the Spurs last night. They fought back from 18 down in the second quarter to make it a game, pushing the Nuggets to the final seconds, only to lose 121 to 119. They are 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games and have lost a season-high five in a row. They're not at full strength, and they face a brutal schedule down the stretch with 15 of their final 22 regular season games on the road. DeMar was asked, what do the veterans tell the young players during a negative stretch like this one? We have no choice. You know, this, this session of basketball is all about, you know, hitting adversity, um, how you come out of it, how it makes you. Um, and, and not give in to it, not give in to when things not going right, when things not feeling well. You know, just continue preaching that and understand those moments going to come, but it's all about how you how you get out of them, you know, and working towards that. Spurs are back at it again tomorrow night at 7 with the Mavericks. Dallas is going for the three-game regular season sweep. Trey Lyles, Gorgie Zhang are out, and Bates Diop questionable for the Spurs. Now that her college career is over with, star guard Keanu Williams can focus on the WNBA draft. This year's draft will be virtual once again due to COVID-19. She hired an agent earlier this week, and he went to work right away. Several mock drafts have Keanu going late in the first round. Her dad feels she's going to go earlier than that. The NCAA champion and Wagner great. It's just trying to live in the moment. I'm feeling all the emotions. I'm excited, nervous, um, anxious, um, you know, just trying to, you know, take take all the moments in uh, one, one moment at a time. Um, everything's been happening so fast, but, you know, just trying to, you know, relax and, and breathe. But I mean, above all, I'm just thankful, thankful that God is, has given me this opportunity. 2021 WNBA draft is set for Thursday, April 15th, 6 p.m. A big night for Kiana, her family and San Antonio. Take you to Minute Maid Park for the rubber game between the Astros and A's today. Top of the fifth, Ramon Laureano crushes a two-run shot to the train tracks. It's 4-0 A's. His first homer this season goes 415 feet. Bottom seven, Astros down 6-2. Runner on second with Michael Brantley lines one to the wall in right center field. Jose Altuve scores. Brantley slides in with a triple, and that's as close as Houston would get. The A's win 7-3, taking two of three. Houston has lost two straight. Padres at the Rangers, and Texas got some hits tonight. Bottom of the fifth, tied to three. Isaiah kiner falefa hits a rocket out the left of Ryan Weathers for a solo homer, and it's 4-3 Rangers. He had two hits and three runs batted in. Top of the seventh, same score. Padres come back. Trent Grisham with the man on. Lifts one up and out to right field off West Benjamin for the go-ahead shot. Two-run homer makes it 5-4 to four. Padres. They tack on two more runs, and San Diego wins 7-4. to four. The Rangers had seven hits in the loss after getting no hit last night. In college football, Southland Conference action going on right now. Northwestern State is playing at Incarnate Word, and look at that. It's tied 40-all late in the fourth quarter. The Demons are 0-5, but much better than their record shows. We'll have more tomorrow at 5.30. And congratulations to UTSA Cheer. They won Nationals for Small Co-Ed Division 1A at NCA this weekend. This is video they sent to us. Shout out to head coach Gabe Ortiz, his assistants Ashley Johnson, Carla Perez, and Travis Owens, and of course, the entire squad. We like this so much, we're continuing to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of hey, they're champs. There. Yeah, Let's some love do it. for the cheer squad. Good stuff, Larry. Thank you. You got it. Three high school seniors from the same school are joining the Ivy League. How they're making history in their hometown. Tell me something good is next.